Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pattern called Buds and Blooms. This is Daniela Stout's latest pattern for Cozy Quilt Designs, and I just love her patterns. The color scheme that she chose for the quilt on the cover here, it's just beautiful. And I was tempted to do the same colors, but something I like to try is picking a drastically different color combination and seeing how it turns out. Now these are Kay Facet prints. Kay Facet is a pattern and fabric designer, and his prints are very bold, very distinctive, usually a lot of bright colors. The pattern calls for a strip set. So this is called Neptune from Cave Facet, and it's all different strips, and that should look really good in this pattern. And instead of the white background that's shown here, I'm going to try using a black background, and I'm hoping that all of these colors will pop very nicely against that background. The other thing we're going to need is some side triangles, and instead of the solid green, I'm going to use this wild print from Cave Facet. The pattern does have multiple sizes. I'm going to make the twin today, so I need 21 of the Jelly Roll strips, 3 and 5 eighths of the black background, a little bit of accent, or you can pick a couple of strips to use for your accent, the setting triangles, that's this wild print, we need a yard and an eighth, and then there's yardages for the borders and the binding and the backing, but we will worry about that later. Right now, let's get started with the patchwork. Our first step is to get this jelly roll opened up and pick out the 21 strips that we're going to use. Now these are all bright and colorful, so it probably isn't going to matter which ones we use. And I think there's duplicates, so I'll probably try to use one of each and put the duplicate aside. Here are the 21 strips that I've selected. I also put two aside for the accent. And the next step is to do some subcutting on these strips and cut up the background. The cutting is all done. The next step is to take one of our jelly roll strips and one of our long background strips over to the sewing machine. These two strips are going to be put right sides together. And you'll notice the strip that came from the jelly roll, the pinked edges are sticking out just a little bit, and that's fine. The one that I cut with my rotary blade is exactly two and a half inches wide. So it's easiest if we put that on the top because then we can tell where to stitch our quarter inch seam from. I'm just gonna stitch all the way down this first side. Now I'm just gonna spin it around and stitch down the other side. And you'll notice I'm using white thread and that's so you can see the stitching. I would recommend when you have colors this dark to use black or dark blue, something that matches a little better. Next step is to cut these into half square triangles. And here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to use something called the strip tube ruler and I'm going to put the two and a half inch line on the stitching line. Now if you don't have a strip tube ruler, the pattern will give you instructions on how to cut this. So I've got that line right on my white stitching and I'm gonna cut this side, move that away, and cut the other side. And what we end up with is a half square triangle. Now I'm going to flip the ruler around Put that same two and a half inch line on the top stitching line and make another cut. Then I'm just going to continue flipping the ruler and cutting the whole strip tube. Now sometimes, like right here, you're going to have to make two cuts because you can't move it all the way over. So there's my two and a half inch. I can move it over to here 
and I'll cut this side and then that side. All of these need to get pressed with the seam allowance toward the darker fabric, which is the background in my case. So I'm just gonna peel it open, hold it down with my fingers, and then press. The last step is to trim off any dog ears. That's this little extra bit right here. So I'm just gonna trim it even with the raw edge there. The pattern will tell you how many half square triangles you need to make. And we are ready to make our first block. So we need eight of these half square triangles. We need four of these small background rectangles. We need four of these larger background squares four of these colorful squares, and just one of the small accent square, and we can take these over to the sewing machine. We're going to make this in steps. So the first step is to take two of these guys, one background square, and one printed square, and we need to make four of these units. So I'm just gonna put them right sides together like this, slide it over, and stitch down and all of the seam allowances are going to get pressed toward the whole square, not toward the half square triangles, towards the whole squares. Be a little bit careful when you finger press this that you don't stretch it because this part of the square is all bias and it will stretch if you pull on it too much. So I'm just kind of squashing it down a little bit. This is the fourth unit here, and all of the seam allowances are going, going to get pressed towards this background. That is how the pieces get placed, along with these four, which go between the patchwork and the cornerstone, we'll call it goes right in the middle. So we're just going to sew these into rows and sew the rows together. Press these seams toward the background. That one goes that way. This one goes that way. Now we just have to add these last three pieces. And press these again toward the background. And the last step is to just stitch these rows together here. To iron these successfully, it's easiest if you do it from the back first. Because every other block is biased. You have to be careful that you don't stretch it out of shape and get it distorted. So I'm just gonna pat it down a little bit with the iron so the seam allowances are for sure staying the direction that we finger pressed them. Then I'm gonna turn it over and I'm just going to pat everything into place before I add steam. So you can keep everything straight with your iron and then as it looks good, then you add the steam because that, it sets it into place. So just be careful you don't stretch. And you can get them nice and square. Okay, the first kind of block is done and we're ready to start the second block. All we need are the background strips and the printed strips. Take one background and one printed strip and stitch them together, but just down one side. Again, it's a little bit easier to put the background strip on top, but we're only gonna stitch the one side. Finger press the seam allowances toward the background. We do want to iron these, even though we finger pressed, that's not quite enough to keep it flat. So smooth it out, make sure it's straight, and then add some steam. And all of these strips are going to get subcut then. So I'm gonna line up with one of the straight lines on my board, 
and cut it into two and a half inch segments. Those are all done. So we're going to take eight of these, four of these rectangles, and one center square to the machine. The first step is to take two of these and put them together like this. So we're gonna make four of these units. They're pretty easy to stitch because the seam allowance in the middle, they're going in opposite directions. So it's going that way and that way. So it's very easy to get them to match and nest. And we're just gonna press it to one side. And these are not biased, so it's very easy to finger press that. So go ahead and make all four. Once you have all four done, lay them out with the printed blocks in the outer corners. And you can switch them around if you want to get a nice blend. It doesn't really matter. I've got so many colors here, they're all going to blend nicely. That one goes in the middle. These four go like this, so it looks a lot like the block we made earlier, but instead of half square triangles, we've just got these nice four patch blocks. I went ahead and stitched everything together just like we did on the first blocks, but these will be easy to iron because all of the grains are straight. I've got all of both kind of patchwork blocks stitched up and we're ready to lay out the quilt. Now it's on point and the first row is going to be all of this kind of block. And then the second row is the second block that we made. So these will go between. And I'm leaving space between them because we have some background pieces that we cut out. These are sashing and cornerstones. So let me get the rest of this laid out and then we'll figure out where those pieces go. That's all the blocks. And I made absolutely no effort to balance the colors because there's so many bright colors in all of the fabrics. I can't see that there's any more of one color in one area. But when you make yours, you might have to trade around some blocks. The next step is to take these sashing pieces and put them between all of the blocks. So if we put these here, we're going to end up with a little hole right there, and that's where these cornerstones go. I know they're the same color as the background, but when you do it in a separate piece, it makes your patchwork stitch together easier. That is the last of the cornerstone pieces. The quilt is almost all laid out, but we have all these missing areas around the edges. So I went ahead and cut all of the side setting triangles. We've got three different sizes. So the biggest ones, they are going to go in these big areas. And then we've got some little teeny ones. Those go at the end of each row of sashing. So there's kind of a missing spot right here that they will fit in. Once we've got all of that laid out, then there's just four triangles that are this size, and these will go in the very far corners. So these will go here. We need another little one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay out all of these on the table. To stitch the quilt together, you have to think of the rows as diagonal. So this is the first row. There's just that one piece. The second row is these three pieces. So I'm going to stitch this together and then I'm going to trim off those extra points there so the row is straight. Then I'm going to sew this onto it. The third row, same procedure. It's all of these pieces right here. So I'm going to line up this edge, stitch everything together, trim off those little tips and then sew this onto it. And I'm going to keep sewing rows until I get the whole thing put together. Then all I have to do is add a couple of borders and get it onto the quilting machine. Now that the quilt is all loaded up, we get to pick a thread color. There's lots of choices that would look good and I could use black on here, but I do want the thread to show a little bit in these black areas. So this is the most extreme color. 
It's a nice aqua. It's going to show a lot. I think this one would be good. If I can find the end there without my glasses. Here we go. Now that's going to show just a little bit, just a little hint of color, especially when you're up close to it. So a lot of lavender in these prints. That's going to show up a little more. Green is a good option here. So it's nice and dark. It'll just give us a little bit of shadowing in the contours and this nice teal. It's pretty dark, going to not show up very much. I think I'm going to go with the green. For the quilting pattern, I've selected one called Bubble. A lot of times when I pick a pattern, I will get something that rhymes with the prints in the quilt. So if you'll take a look at the quilt, the fabric on the border, it's got all these round things. And I think that will not fight with the patchwork, but it echoes this pattern a little bit. The Buds and Blooms quilt is all done. Now that it's all together, you can see rows of squares. It makes like a secondary pattern. Even though we made it from two separate blocks, they all blend together now. From way back, you can barely see the quilting. It's just a hint of color here, but those circles look really good. It almost makes it look like, like it's velvet or textured. One thing I really like about this is these side setting triangles. And you can see these little teeny ones here. These were little ones that we added in and I didn't trim any off. So I have it floating in the top here, which I really like. You of course have the option of trimming this off so, it's an, so that it's a triangle that's cut off there. We only used 21 strips in the patchwork and then I used two strips for the accent, which is right in the middle of every square. But the rest of the strips from my jelly roll, I was able to use on the binding. So I used half jelly roll strips, sewed them all together, and they made a really nice bright binding. One thing I love when I make K facet quilts is to pick one of these large scale prints for the back. Look at that, it just makes a beautiful reversible quilt. So that's one option you have with all of his large scale prints. It turned out 76 by 91, so it's a generously sized twin. And of course there's five different sizes on the pattern, so you can make almost any size you like. Thanks everyone for watching our videos, and if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. We read all the comments and we will answer your questions there. Now at the end of every video, we like to do a giveaway. Today's giveaway is a quilt called Mysterious. This was a quilt that we made some time ago in a video. This is a pattern from Antler Quilt Designs. You can make it with fat quarters, you can make it with jelly roll strips, but today you can win this quilt. And it's very easy to enter. Just click the link right below the video that says giveaway and you put in your name and your email address and you might be the next lucky winner. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting.